ARP 294. What in the world does that even mean? So in astronomy, there are catalogs to represent different uh, cosmic findings um, from Sharpless to Messier to Principal Galaxy Catalog to ARP, um, the Atlas of Peculiar Galaxies. But wait, that kind of sounds funny, right? So Sharpless Catalog is SH2, right? It kind of coincides with that. And Principal Galaxy Catalog is PGC. Why is ARP Atlas of Peculiar Galaxies? Let's find out. I'm going to head over to the computer and show you guys where ARP comes from because I need to look it up myself. Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so now that we're actually in front of the computer, let's look up what ARP stands for because Atlas of Peculiar Galaxies and ARP don't actually line up. So let's take a look. Come along. I'm just going to simply go to Google and type in ARP Galaxy Catalog. Look at that. So we can see here that the Atlas of Peculiar Galaxies is a catalog of peculiar galaxies as produced by Halton Arp in 1966. It contained 338 of these galaxies in his atlas and was originally published by the California Institute of Technology in 1966. I would not have guessed it was the person's last name. I mean, I guess that's the next logical thing when you, I guess you think about it. If it doesn't line up with the acronym, it, it's likely the astronomer. Not all times is that the case though, but let's go ahead and head outside up under the deck and let's talk a little bit more about the galaxies in which we're shooting because there's two of them and they are tidally influencing each other as we speak. All right, so let's jump back to the galaxies that we're actually going to image tonight. Again, it's ARP 294. So now I must warn you, these particular galaxies are very small relative to my entire framing. Um, they're relatively far away from us here on Earth and might even seem unimpressive to uh, someone who's not into astronomy or astrophotography for that matter. But to me, it's what the image actually represents that leaves me in awe and inspired. The possibility that someone may be looking back at the Milky Way and Andromeda, let's say, um, saying, look, here's a pair of peculiar galaxies about to collide relative to that civilization's time frame, of course. So many of you probably watched my last video, which was of course M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. And in that video, I used the RC8 and we're gonna use the RC8 again. We need a little extra reach to get this far to see these galaxies. Now with eight inches of aperture or 200 millimeters of aperture here, uh, basically the eye of the telescope, when I open this panel, we're gonna be able to see a long ways and resolve a decent amount of detail. Obviously, the larger the telescope, the more light you're able to capture. Therefore, you're gonna see a little bit more detail, more stars. Um, and I know that sounds like a lot, but this thing's capable of looking at some objects if they're bright enough, if they have a low enough magnitude as far as a billion light years away, it can do that. Now, the resolution is a completely different discussion. We still have our suite of ZWO products as well. We have our ZWO 2600mm, ZWO filter wheels, ZWO off-axis guiders, ZWO 174mm mini guide camera. Uh, we have our moonlight focuser on here. I've had a couple questions about what this particular item is. This is the moonlight focuser. I've had wonderful experiences with this particular focuser on different telescopes. We have our mini PC strapped onto the back here. I've got some Velcro on one side and then I went ahead and put on the zip tie just to hold it in place. And then of course we've got this zip tied down as well. I showed you the barbecue. Um, that is not all for us. I'm actually gifting it to some of our friends who've actually just had a baby and it will allow them to not have to worry about cooking for a day or two. ARP 294 is a pair of interacting galaxies. And again, they're gonna be fairly small. Now they're estimated to be somewhere in the 164 million light year range away from us. And they're gonna be in the constellation of Ursa Major. Now when ARP released his catalog, his only comment for this particular pair of galaxies was peculiar filaments. 
So maybe you're asking yourself, Mark, how are you going to capture these galaxies? Now, just a reminder, you can capture these as well. We have some other tools that are, of course, going to help us that include Nina, which will be your acquisition software. It's the software that I'm going to tell it what I want to shoot, how many things I want to shoot, and it's going to do all of the heavy lifting during the night. And this will hopefully help ensure we get plenty of hours of good data on this particular galaxy set and it's framed up perfectly in the process. So without further ado, tell you what, let's just get to it. Please also remember to hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you like this content. If you don't, I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> um, but if you do like and subscribe, it obviously helps me get a lot more exposure and extend my reach to more people such as yourself and continue providing educational content. If you have questions about anything that I've done here, be sure to let me know. I'm happy to help wherever I can. And with that, guys, thank you very much for sticking around with me today and sharing in this first time experience of going after these particular ARP galaxies. So until next time, guys, clear skies and take care of each other.